White Earp arrived in uh, Coeur d'Alene and actually in Eagle City in January of 1884. And that, he came over from Thompson Falls, Montana, over the mountains to get there. He heard about a gold rush that was people supposed to be able to find uh, money, uh, gold laying on the ground. And it was really wealthy and everybody was coming here from all over the country because the railroad uh, made a, a display uh, in the papers all over the country about how wonderful the gold rush was. and They were trying to build up their clientele on their trains and that's the reason they did that. And uh, when he got here, it was the worst winter they'd had since uh, God knows when, but it was uh, 30 foot snow drifts and just horrible weather. And he had to walk from Thompson Falls with his wife over the mountain, Josie. And uh, they came into Eagle City in January of 1884. Well, he gained fame as his gunfight in the OK Corral in uh, Tombstone, Arizona, and uh, where the Clantons were, McCowries were gunned down. And it was really pretty famous. They made a lot of movies about it. But when he got to the camps, he was uh, with that notoriety. The people knew him. So they voted him to be the sheriff, just sort of off the cuff thing. In 1882 is when Andrew Pritchard found gold in the Coeur d'Alene uh, Mountains and, uh, well, the Bedroot Mountains, I guess. But uh, there uh, uh, wasn't much there then, just him. And then when he went to Spokane, he let it be known that he had gold and a bunch of guys forced him to go back over there to try to find the mine and he couldn't find it again. But there wasn't anything there. The Indians were gone. and. There was just, just countryside then. And in Coeur d'Alene, uh, there wasn't anything here either, the city. It was just barely getting started. They had Fort Coeur d'Alene here. And uh, that's pretty much all it was, just trees and tents. The gold rush started in, in uh, the fall season of 1883. That's when people started really coming over here. And they were coming from everywhere. And uh, uh, of course, in the West, there wasn't much here then, you know, but uh, people coming in and filing claims on property with snow on the ground. The people before them filed the same claims, but the snow covered their claim markers. So the other people come in and reclaimed and they finally took it to court and they uh, gave it to the person who had the lowest claim markers in the snow. White Earp came here as a saloon owner. He owned saloons in, in Deadwood, South Dakota. And, uh, well, he was a sheriff there, but, and uh, he owned saloons down in uh, Texas too. And, and the, uh, uh, the thing that was his forte was well, uh, being a businessman. And what he did was he bought the uh, White Elephant Saloon, which is a huge saloon. It was a tent type situation and uh, some other places. And that's where he was sort of the ramrod up there. Well, it was great. It's people come from the mines and they'd been up in the mountains for, for uh, weeks and they finally found gold and they wanted to spend it and have a good time. He, he owned a couple of mines and uh, that's what he got uh, he owned mines and had people working for him. I'm not sure that he that he uh, panned gold, that kind of thing for himself, but uh, he owned mines and they say that he jumped mines and they took him to court a couple of times and he lost one or two cases and it was a pretty good battle. He was sort of the business end of it, you know. He was doing pretty good. He uh, uh, had a lot of people working for him and uh, his wife, Josie, I, I'm sure that she sang in the lo local saloons because that's what she was as a singer. And uh, they had a house and uh, their brother had a house and, and uh, he, I think he did pretty well for himself. When he left here, he must have had a pretty, pretty good amount of money with him. But he went back down to Texas with his girlfriend. Well, I worked in the mines for years and uh, I've always heard the story about Wyatt Earp coming to the Coeur d'Alene's. And I, when I was a kid, I used to write stories and things. And I started writing stories about uh, mining and one thing or another, and printing them in local newspapers and that sort of thing for 
I was had a had a column in the local papers there for quite a long time. But anyhow, uh, that's what made me that's what made me start writing about uh, Wyatt Earp because uh, I've heard the story that he was here. People who have built our history, they shouldn't be forgotten. They've uh, built us, and uh, I think it's important to remember the, our history because if you don't have our history, what do you have? You know, there's nothing, just a bunch of people.